Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So I had this idea, uh, you know, like 40 years ago where I decided that I would let people vote on my videos on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash engineering explained. And then after you voted, uh, I would choose, or whatever you guys chose, I would make a video on, you know, maybe in the next week or two, and then you could have these videos and you guys would vote for it and it'd be great. Well, so two months ago I held one and you guys wanted videos on suspensions and here I am two months later finally making the videos on suspensions. Point is I've been very busy uh, taking 17 credit hours and trying to get a job which is a lot of work actually. And it is still only February so you know January, February it's a new year you gotta lose weight so really trying to lose some weight. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen, well you probably haven't ever seen my entire body. I'm pretty uh, overweight, so definitely trying to lose some weight. Anyways, none of this matters. Let's talk about suspensions. That's why I'm here. That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to have four different videos on suspensions. I'm going to go into different variants, so I'll talk about that more at the end. Whatever. Alright, so suspensions. What is the point of a suspension? Well, that's what I want to start with. So, I, I have these three C's that I just made up there, but it's cool because it's three C's. So you have comfort, contact, and control. Comfort, when you hit bumps in the road and there's all kind of potholes and crap that you gotta hit and dirt, uh, you don't want to be shaking around the whole time, you know? You want to be comfortable. So that's one reason for suspension is actually just you want to be comfortable. Uh, but the main reason is contact. You want to have contact with the ground. You want all four tires to be touching the ground. And if you do have all four tires touching the ground, then you have control. And control also, you know, you, you want your, your mass of your car to be in a certain position. You don't want it leaning way over, leaning and uh, rolling back and bouncing around. You want it to stay in a stationary position, really, so that you have control. So that's why you have suspensions. Now, what components make up a suspension? Well, two of the most important things are springs and dampers. Now, a spring is very simple. It's just an energy storage unit. So, I'm sure you've seen coil springs. These are very common on independent suspensions, actually all kinds of suspensions. Uh, another kind of spring is a leaf spring, and you'll probably see these on solid axles, like on the back of trucks. Uh, it's very common place for a leaf spring. And all this is doing is storing energy. So when you compress that spring, it stores the energy from the motion, from that force pushing in. And when you release, it lets go of that energy, it pushes back out. So if you were to have a car that only had springs, then it would just store that energy and your car would just bounce the entire time. So that's really not ideal, but it does aid in comfort. You know, you're not gonna just bolt up in the air, you're gonna have a little, a bit of a cushion with that spring. So in unison, you have to have that damper so you're not just bouncing for the rest of the ride. So you have a damper. Now what is a damper? Or a, a shock absorber as we call it here in the United States. Uh, so you've got this damper and basically what it does is energy dissipation. You, the spring will store energy and the damper will get rid of that energy so you're not bouncing. It'll, it'll smoothen it out and every time it'll be less and then you'll just go back to a flat pace. So basically it just looks like this. It's a piston inside of a cylinder with some pressurized oil. Uh, and how that works is, I've got a little zoom in of what's going on right in here, and you've got this piston type device, and it's got little holes in it. And so, as you hit a bump, it's going to compress this shock, and it, some of that oil is going to be forced through these little holes. Whether it's extending or compressing, the oil will be forced through those holes, and as it does that, these tiny holes, it's very pressurized, so it'll release heat, kinetic energy will create heat, and you'll dissipate that force of the bump or whatever it may be. So the great thing about modern shock absorbers is that they react to the velocity that hits them. So say you're driving along, you know, really fast and you hit a bump, well that damper is going to react according to the force that hits. So if it's a larger speed that it hits at, it'll dampen out more. And if it's a slower speed, it'll dampen less. So it's, it's a very ideal device as it, as it reacts to the velocity of what, whatever is hitting it. Also, it's not just about bumps. Uh, turning, braking, and acceleration all require the use of a damper or shock absorber. Now why is this? So let's say you're going around a turn. Well if you just had springs, that weight is going to go into the right springs if you're going taking a left turn, and then it's going to take that uh, energy and push it over to the left side. So your car's just going to kind of roll back and forth. 
Or if you accelerate, you know, you floor it, then you're going to go back at first, but then the springs in the back are going to push it forward, so you're just going to rock back and forth in your car. If you have these dampers, it's going to dissipate that energy, so that as you're traveling along, you floor it, you know, you go back a little bit, and then you kind of smoothen back out. And the dampers are, are one of the main reasons that you can smoothen back out like that. Uh, so one thing that kind of combines springs and dampers together are struts. And struts are basically just that, a spring and a damper combined. You've got a shock here and a spring going with it. And also the great thing about this is it's also a structural component. Uh, one of the most common that you've probably heard of is a McPherson strut. And I will have a separate video just on McPherson struts, so uh, if, if you're curious about that, don't worry, it's coming eventually. But basically, the good thing about having a strut when you combine this shock and spring is that you're also going to use this as a structural component for the vehicle. Not only will it be dissipating the energy like springs and dampers do when combined, but you can eliminate the upper control arm. Now you might may not know what I'm talking about when I say upper control arm, but basically you're going to have control arms connecting to your wheel, keeping it there, and this strut will act as not only the, the dissipating element and the energy storage element, but it will also connect uh, directly so that you have just one control arm on the bottom and then this will connect to the car up on the top. So it's a great thing in one device and that's why the McPherson strut is so popular is you can get a job done fairly cheaply with it. So here I've just modeled what a suspension does. You've got your car, you know, this huge mass of weight uh, and you've got a spring and a shock. Now this is a very simple model. Obviously you're going to have this at every uh, tire, but just look at the car in general. So you've got a spring and a shock between the car. And then you've got your tire here. Now I split this up because your tire, the rubber in it actually has some uh, spring and shock absorbing kind of elements to it. it. It can dissipate energy and it can also store en energy just like springs and shocks. So it has like an, an inherent stiffness and damping uh, associated with it. So you've got that going on. You've got the car, which is going to be your sprung weight. This is the weight that is held up by your springs and shocks. And that's why it's called your sprung weight, because it's on top of the springs. Now obviously you want as much weight as possible in your sprung weight, because that's what your suspension is there for. It's there to support that weight and dissipate or store energy when you hit bumps and things like that or go around corners. And then you've got your unsprung weight, which is below the springs and shocks, um, and that includes things like your axles, hubs, bearings, and even part of the suspension components. That weight goes in there. And then you've got the tire, which acts as a spring and shock, sort of, with the road. So that's, that's your main model with your suspension. And so next I'll be going into different suspension variants. The three I want to talk about are the McPherson strut, uh, double wishbone or double A-arm suspension, whatever you'd like to call that, and also the uh, solid rear axle or solid axle uh, suspension. And uh, I don't know if you guys prefer to see one of those next or not, but if you do, just leave a comment. Be like, hey, make this one next. Um, and other suggestions, whatever you guys want. And check me out on Facebook.com slash Engineering Explained. And uh, like, you know, a couple times a year I'll hold a vote and you can pick what the next videos will be. So that's great, right? Yeah. <laughs>